Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome to Elder Scrolls Online and the Necrom expansion. Today we are starting a new journey in Tamriel. We are going to be going on a Dark Elf Arcanist, the new class that has been added to the game. With the new update, I am really excited to try this class out. The last time we tried Elder Scrolls, I went on a Templar, and I just really wasn't into the race, class, fantasy. It didn't really vibe with me. And I'd played a Templar before when the game first came out, so I was really familiar with it. Nothing had really changed, and I just really couldn't get into my character. But I did start to get a little bit familiar with Dark Elves, and I ended up liking them a lot. So that's why we are going on a Dark Elf this time around. There we are. Thank you guys very much for clicking on the video and joining me today. A little bit about my play style, if you are new to the channel, is that I like to just have a nice, relaxing, and immersive time exploring the worlds that we venture through. So as part of that, I'll try to keep the music and ambience up, and I'll try to keep the commentary down except when we're reading stuff or responding to dialogue choices and things like that. Thank you guys again. Uh, I think we're just going to get right into things here. I'm just rolling with the intro experience that they've given us here as an Arcanist. I don't know if this is specific to the class, but I, I do see a lot of other uh, people running around here. So we're going to roll with this experience and we'll just kind of decide from there where we want our adventures to take us. And I would love to have your guys' input on that kind of stuff as well. Right upon logging in, I did skip the introductory experience. I've already done the tutorial before. So we are already level 3. Let's have a look at a couple things. Right off the bat, I don't really know for sure, but I'm thinking we want to spend a little bit on Magicka. So let's do that. We'll commit our points. Let's jump over into our class trees. We have Herald of the Tome, Soldier of Apocrypha, and Curative Runeforms. Herald of the Tomb, we can get Rune Blades. Cost determined by highest max resource. Craft a series of apocryphal runes before launching them at the foe, dealing 1,200 magic damage three times and generating crew. Crux? How would you pronounce that? This ability deals 3% increased damage for each active crew when cast. I, that's a word I've read many times, but I've never heard pronounced. Uh, Soldier of Apocrypha, Runic Jolt. Craft a defensive apocryphal rune that deals 2164 magic damage and applies minor maim for 15 seconds, reducing their damage done. The rune also taunts. Oh, so that's kind of like a tanking spec. Let's, let's grab rune blades. Just to get us started. Yes, he advised abilities. Runic Jolt, Rune Mend, and Fate Carver. So we'll, we'll grab this as well. Let's take our first quest here. Fate has noticed your talent for altering destiny. Reality hangs in the balance, as does the future of Apocrypha and Nern. Hence I bring a message from Hermaeus Mora, the one who knows. Mora offers you a purpose, an aspiration dark and heavy. A purpose? What purpose? We are bound together by a common danger. Enemies of Hermaeus Mora threaten his realm of oblivion, and in so doing pose a threat to the mortal world as well. Therefore Mora sent me to meet you here, and secure your cooperation. All right, I'm kind of lost, but what sort of cooperation? Only a mortal proxy can deal with a threat and save both Apocrypha and Nern. The fates of both realms are linked, and you are the key to preserving reality. Without you, everything unravels. Help avert this disaster, and Mora will reward you. All right, I guess I'll help. Where do I start? The one who knows instructed me to give you this. A condensate of planar potentialities. It, uh, you will not understand. That's true. It is ink. Take it to the Redrith Cistern, a ruin near the city. Pour the ink into the water, and your path will be made clear. Alright, let's dig into some stuff. Tell me about Hermius Mora. Have you never heard of the Daedric Prince of Forbidden Knowledge? The Lord of Fate. The riddle unsolvable? Hmm. 
Hermaeus Mora knows everything. He is the wisest of the Daedra. Every secret and all knowledge finds its way to Apocrypha in time. And what's Apocrypha? I am astonished how little the mortals of our tiny world comprehend. Mm -hmm. Apocrypha is the realm of Hermaeus Mora, his home and seat of power. One of the countless realms that drift through Oblivion. Please, do not ask me about Oblivion. <laughs> and who are you again? I am Laramel, sometimes called the Wise, although that is not a sobriquet I care for. I seek to comprehend the emergent truths elicited by the... Um, never mind that. I am a scholar. A century ago, I struck a bargain with Hermaeus Mora. So you serve them? I do not worship him, if that is your question. The Prince of Knowledge is an ally and patron. Mora provides me with access to rare and esoteric lore. In return, I undertake various tasks for him. A mutually beneficial arrangement. And what do you know about these enemies that threaten Apocrypha? They seem to be servants of other Daedric princes. Rivals to the one who knows. The threads of fate that converge in this region should reveal more. That is the hope, at least. And we are not dealing with just simple cultists. There are others. What others? Someone sent the Duskseber Company to seize relics belonging to Hermaeus Mora from their hiding places in Tamriel. Elite vampire mercenaries commonly nice. employed by Telvanni mages. I expected the cultists. The Dusk Sabers were an unwelcome surprise. What were they looking for? Glyphics. Think of them as crystallized memories. Condensations of notional... Uh, I explain too much. Probably, yeah. I managed to protect Mora's glyphics with some help. But our adversaries once again move against us. All right. Let's take a look at the map here. Uh, we are over here, and we are headed all the way down this way to the southwest. Uh, we have a delve along the way. Maybe we should pop in there first and see what's going on. We have level 3 rewards to claim. <laughs> and maybe, yeah, I should probably, maybe I should just grab the, the heal as well. Not sure if I should grab the heal or maybe just hold on to my points. Maybe I'll hold on to the points for now. And we'll kind of go from there. Well, we have a quest Where over here. The, the overseer was supposed to meet me hours ago. You there? Do you work here? As a notary for the Kwama Consortium of Necrom, I demand that you explain why production has halted. Are you aware of the irreparable harm this is inflicting on our image? I don't know, and I don't work at the mine. The consortium will be none too pleased. Apologies, traveler. I came on a little strong there. I'm an auditor sent to inspect Anchor Eggmine. It's been a few days since their last shipment, and the higher-ups are growing restless. And they sent you to investigate all by yourself? Please, this isn't the first worker's strike I've negotiated. Wait, you don't think something dangerous happened here, do you? Well, I have expense funds for this assignment. 
Might I hire you as a bodyguard while I perform my audit? Absolutely. I'm required to inform you that as a contractor for the Kwama Consortium, you are held to the highest standards of conduct. But on a personal note, thank you. Now, we'll need to inspect the pens, speak with the overseer, and take note of the queen. Did you mention a Kwama queen? Oh, yes. A healthy Kwama queen is as good as gold around here. Their eggs are a staple food for dark elves. The consortium outfits these mines with the best tools and workers money can buy. And what is the consortium? The Kwama Consortium of Necrom oversees the care and husbandry of egg mines on the peninsula. Their export of eggs is second to none, but even one mine operating below expectations can lead to grumbles among shareholders. And that's where you come in. Myself and others like me, yes. Auditors. Adjusters, if you will. We assess the egg mines to ensure they continue to meet the consortium's production standards. Though that's certainly not to say I'm irreplaceable. So you're worried you might get fired? Anchor Egg is a particularly important mine. It may seem dramatic, but I'm convinced any failure here will result in my dismissal. It isn't easy for an outsider like myself to be accepted into a Telvani business, so yes, I'm a bit worried. Tell me more about the details of the audit. It's routine, really. Whenever the consortium believes a mine is operating below standards, they send along an auditor to run an inspection. This usually entails the overseer providing a comprehensive tour of the Kwama pens and the mine's queen. Are you familiar with the mine's overseer? Olfengar. I've met him once before, back when the mine was first opened. Nord fellow, tough as rocks and sweet as salt, but a hard worker. You want that in an overseer. To be honest, I'm surprised he's late. It's definitely out of the ordinary. Do you think something's gone wrong? I haven't the faintest idea. I was only sent along to conduct an audit, though the consortium did seem rather on edge. They said I should expect to hear all sorts of excuses, from cave-ins to cultists. <laughs> Laughable, I know, but it's part of the job. And do you think the miners are making excuses for the lack of productivity? I shouldn't jump to conclusions, especially when I haven't had the chance to assess anything yet. All right. Let's go. Oh, the smell really just hits you right... more activity in the mine, but... Oh, by the green! What happened here? I think she's dead. Ooh, <laughs> those are some really cool spell effects. That's really nice. I wonder what the max range is on this. About about right here it looks like. Ouch. Someone down there! Please! Help us! 
Someone's alive? Let's hurry. Now you are a welcome sight. Please tell me the way out of here is clear. We were starting to lose any hope of escape. Uh, I'm accompanying Cindy at an auditor sent by the consortium. Who are you? Sure, Spones. I ask for aid and they send an auditor. At this rate, there won't be a mine left to audit. I'm Overseer Ulfengar. The egg tenders behind me are Molsa and Barlock. We barely managed to escape the Quama, let alone those damned cultists. Wait, did you say cultists? Yes, I sent word days ago asking for more guards. We first saw them sneaking around the mine, but now they've broken in somewhere near the hatchery. They've whipped the Quama into a frenzy, and I'm worried they're trying to poison the clutch. Are there any other survivors? Fomessa went looking for survivors down the southern ramp. Oh, she did. An egg tender Gain left to scout the southeastern passageways for a way out. I ended up here with Malsa and Barluk. If there are others alive out there, you'd know better than me. Well, Fomessa's dead. We'll look for Gain. Oh, Fomessa. She was hard as steel and twice as sharp. If she didn't make it, that doesn't bode well for the rest of us. Can you find Gain? He made his way towards the mess cavern not too far from here. You think the cultists are trying to poison the clutch? One of the egg hands, Gain, noticed young Kwama returning to their pins with green slime. A few days later, we started spotting cultists skulking about. What better way to poison a clutch than to taint the young ones? But there has to be more to it. Oh, why do you say that? There are plenty other mines across the peninsula. Killing this brood would only be an inconvenience to the consortium. But yet the cultists are here in full force. I'm certain there must be more to their plan, but I have to look out for the miners. If I ever make it out of this mine, I'm going to wring the neck of whoever made my sweet Kwama go mad. They didn't deserve this. Please tell me you're here to rescue us. Barlock's hurt, and I'm a miner, not a healer. Ah, there's a sky shard up there I'd like to get. Now, we're two out of three for this area, but I, I wonder if maybe something's up top here. We could circle around this way. And we have cultist action. these people and what are they doing to this mine
I still feel like maybe we missed something down in this area. Maybe we should double back. Oops. Oh, we've made them all very, very angry. From my notes, I think this is... was... Gain, One of the chief egg hands. Alright, and now we probably have to circle around. Let's, let's head this way. And maybe we can circle around in this direction. It's interesting, the game does not seem to save your keybinds from character to character. That is a little bit weird, I'm not used to that. Um, auto run, I'd like that here. Uh, what else do I need to change? Camera, user interface. Alright, we could learn another ability here. Fate Carver. Harness pure knowledge into a beam of energy that scars the world in front of you. Channel the beam for up to 4 seconds, dealing magic damage every point. That sounds really cool. Let's, let's get in on that. Uh, let's change this a little bit. There we go. Ooh, that's really cool. Oh, I like that a lot. That's really cool looking. You can even move while it channels. They've torn each other apart. Look, a notice on the pen. Let's see what it says. Keep a close eye on the scribs. I'm seeing a lot of little ones wandering into older parts of the mine and coming back covered in green goo. Could be some sort of mold or drippage from the surface, but it's got them acting up. Twice I've been bitten by otherwise docile scribs. The consortium won't like it, but we may need to pause production until we figure out where this green ichor is coming from. 
Last thing we want is a sickness spreading through the mine. Green eye core. Could that be the source of this frenzy? This poor hive. I just want to see what the abilities look like in first person for a bit. I probably won't play a lot in first person, but I kind of want to see what it looks like. So if we take Rune Spite Ward, like the Rune Knights of old, summon a shield that absorbs 7,000 damage for 6 seconds, scaling off your max HP. The first time you take direct damage, the shield retaliates and deals 1,300 magic damage to the attacker, scaling off your armor. Consume Crew to heal, heal yourself, 2,300 HP. I should probably be saving some of my points, but I, I want to try out a bunch of these abilities. I know that it seems like this is DPS, this is tanking, this is healing. But I wonder if it's okay for me to play with some of the abilities in the other trees. I'm going to grab it for now. And you guys can let me know if I'm making really stupid choices. I, I'd love to hear from you. As someone who is relatively unexperienced with the game, uh, I, I'd love to have your guys' input. Oh, that's cool. I wonder how long that just kind of stays up on us. The afflicted Not for very long. Has proven most effective. It has made short work of this egg mine. This contagion will destroy Necrom's them begging for Lord Periite's mercy. Gods, all this destruction, oh, yes. all this suffering. Another subject Why are they doing this? Our
Well, that was actually a fun encounter. I liked that a lot. Done irreparable harm to this egg mine, but at least you dealt with their leader. Thank you. What have they done to her? The mine is dead without its queen. Perhaps we can still harvest her pheromone gland? It's the only thing that might help us. Thank you. The consortium may be able to rebuild the hive with that. Poor thing. That's everything. Let's head outside. The overseer and the others should have made it out by now. Overseer, I'm glad you all made it out. With your expertise in the Queen's pheromone gland, we should be able to reopen the mine and... Reopen the mine? After the Consortium left us to die? To sovereign God with this mine. You've got the Queen's gland, requeen the mine yourself. We're leaving. Orfengar, please reconsider. Orfengar? Friend, can you please talk to the Overseer? The people of Necron we can try. will starve without this mine. If Sindith had wandered in here alone and gotten herself killed, how long before the Consortium sent another to find us? A day? A week? We're lucky someone of your metal was nearby. You have my thanks, friend. Truly. So you really intend to leave? Sindith believes without your help this mine will fail. It failed the moment those consortium hawkers chose to ignore my letters. Fair. Does Sindiath really think a queen's gland and some elbow grease will be enough to put that place to rights? You saw what those cultists were doing. It's blighted. Finished. The consortium will try to reopen it. Do you trust them to do it safely without your oversight? So it's my burden then. Shore's bones. Those bastards are just greedy enough to risk it, aren't they? With a fresh queen's gland. Bah! No, we'd need an army of egg hands, alchemists, a staffed garrison. The consortium would never agree to it. Apparently, we have a choice to make here. Uh, we can have him take the gland and set his own demands. Sindiath will make the consortium see reason, or we can say you're right to distrust the consortium. I'll give the gland to Sindiath and tell her you're done. I think he should set his own demands. Hmm. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. Let me see this gland. And tell Sindiath we'll stay on if the Consortium provides all the staff and resources I need. The moment they hedge, I'm leaving. And taking Malsa and Barlak with me, Necrom be damned. Fair. That sounded like it went well. Please tell me you have some good news. I really need something to soften the blow of this report to my superiors at the Consortium. Ulfengar says they'll stay, but only if the Consortium meets his demands and cleans the mine. Oh, trust me, I'll make sure the Consortium does what is right. To send an auditor in place of soldiers? Unbelievable. The safety of the people of Necrom is my highest priority. Take my thanks, and everything that I owe you. Good. You can start by making sure the families of those lost in the mine are properly taken care of. Of course. Honoring those lost is the first step towards making things right. The first of many. Alright, well I'm, I'm glad that we stopped there to see what was going on. Let's continue down the road on to our main quest. That's what I really love about this game, is a lot of times, even when you're doing an optional side quest, or just like an optional quest or activity, 
um, all the care that was put into the writing and concocting the story for it, it makes you feel like you're doing main story questing. It feels like the side quests in ESO are like the quality equivalent of main quest in most MMOs. So that's really, always really awesome to see. It basically makes every single side quest and every quest worth doing because th there's always going to be like the reward of seeing a good story. Which a lot of games uh, don't offer. Uh, we have a point of interest, something over here we should probably go check out. Looks like a crafting area. I kind of want to come over here and get the Way Shrine. For weapons, I'm kind of wondering what I should do for weapons, like whether or not I should keep the axe. Part of me wants to do like a, a bow build, part of me thinks maybe a magic staff, I really don't know. It's always been one of the problems I've had conceptually with ESO is I'm really used to games that say, you know, this class equips this kind of armor and uses these weapons. And in ESO, the classes can use any weapons. And so I, I really don't know if there are preferable builds or if I'm really free to do what I want with my weapon choice. I would love for you guys to give me some input and advice on what kind of weapon build I might want to do with the uh, Arcanist here. And of course, now that I've come this far, I have to head out here. I have to figure out what this is as well. Let's let's do that. Mm, we're not going that way. It's some kind of cavern, Talbaro Cavern. Ancestral home of the Baro family. Uh, okay. This is some kind of a dungeon. 
that I'm in. I have no idea if I'm supposed to be here. I have no idea if it's optional, if I would find this later, guided by a quest. I really don't know. But let's let's have a little look around, shall we? There don't seem to be any enemies. It doesn't seem to be like an aggressive or dangerous area. But yeah, I have no idea what a person would do here. We have some kind of uh, gateway up ahead. We cannot pass through whatever this is. Alright. Interesting. Uh, these people... Also, maybe can't pass through? Hmm. I don't know. There is going to be so much in this game that I don't know. And I'll throw the question out to you guys since I'm not super familiar with the game. Is it worthwhile when I'm in an area to just kind of explore around and uncover all the points of interest? Or is it better just to kind of follow the questing and let that guide your journey? I would really like to hear from those of you who have maybe played for a long time. This is housing, okay. Housing is probably something I don't need to worry about too much right now. I'm not sure how it works, but it's good to know that it's here. Purchase options. The house is not currently for sale. Understood.
Oh dear god, we picked the fight with the wrong enemy. We, we died! <laughs> oh Jesus. We got nailed for a bunch of damage. I don't know if it's better to revive here at the Way Shrine. The Way Shrine is probably going to be safer. So we'll revive at the Way Shrine, which was uh, over this way. Fungal Downs Edifice. Alright, yeah, that's the first time that I've ever been killed in this game. It's nice to know that it can happen. And when it does happen, apparently it happens quite brutally. A nightmare den. Nightmare den sounds really bad. So obviously we have to go see what it is. Did we leash them? Don't tell me we leashed them. Yeah, I think we leashed them. God, I feel like we've made a terrible mistake. Oh shit. <laughs> so this is some kind of uh, some big event. I want to revive here and see what happens. Oh god, we're just being overrun. Maybe we need to we need to stay away a little bit. Uh, and maybe not pull aggro so much. Um I don't seem to be able to do anything. Oh there we go. Now, now we're free. Uh, those deal quite a bit of damage. Oh god, they're all coming for me again! Why me? Oh my god, we just we just can't stand up to it.
Wow, I, I don't know what that was. Some kind of massive PvE event, uh, but it was really, really cool. Even though I feel like we're not like strong enough to really be here doing it, uh, it was still really, really fun. Very nice. Maybe we should get back on track just a little bit and try to follow up with the main story questing. Since we did seem a little weak in that fight. You there! You look like a capable forager. Oh. I need some help. Okay. Can we talk? Well, absolutely. Thank the ancestors you stopped. Right. Well, <clears throat> I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I need to collect ingredients for a medicinal tincture, and I simply don't have time. I need someone to help. A medicinal tincture, you say? Ah, yes. I am Balva Bemis, retainer to Oathman Lero Rawless of House Telvani. Lero suffers from beastly headaches, and I'm making a tincture to address his malady. I need some hard-to-attain ingredients. If you aid me, I'll pay you well. And what are these ingredients? I need the musk gland of a bull netch. I spotted some netch remains around Kemmel Z. Also a plant called the Volcanic Stinkhorn from near Salen Mora. And lastly, fungal blooms from a dead shroom beetle. The best ones skitter around Tel Drelov. All right, we'll get right on it. Once you collect the ingredients, I'll make the necessary preparations at my workstation in Ald Isra. You know, getting the viscosity right and all that. Yeah, sure. Tell me about Oathman Laro. He's a very demanding individual, even at the best of times. Commands with an iron fist, you know. And when these headaches strike, he is positively tyrannical. No, oh, and the tincture will cure the headaches. Yes, yes. I think it will address his malady fully. I mean, I hope so. He's terrible when he's like this. All right, it looks like those objectives are a little bit all over the place. We have one back up here near the murder den. And then a couple down here to the south uh, near our main questing. So let's keep heading down the road here. And we'll see if we find anything else on the way. are going to talk to me. Please? I have no one else I can turn to. I need help. I worked as a servant in the towers of Teldrelov. Nathan, the son of Mistress Drelov, is being kept prisoner there. At least, I think he must be. Why do you think that? Nathan and I had plans to leave Teldrelov together. Someone must have found out because the day we planned to leave, I was dismissed from my position. Mistress Drelov, or Suthiel, I suppose, pushed me out without a chance to see Nathan. And where do you suppose he is now? If she's holding him against his will, he'll be in the isolation tower. The only access is through the lab in the caverns that run underneath. There's a key in the top floor of the main tower. Please, can you help me? I'll pay for your assistance. I can help you, yep. Thank the eight you came along. I had no idea how I would do this on my own. I know Sathiel would just throw me out again, but Nathan is my whole world. I can't possibly leave Teldreloth without him. I might have some questions. The first step. Certainly. You know, it's been so long since I spoke to another outsider. I didn't think I'd miss it so much. Why can't he escape on his own? I say this with love, but Nathan's not a fighter. 
He's lived a sheltered life, and Sathil is a very skilled mage. But he wouldn't fight his mother anyway. Until he met me, he seemed content with heeding Sathil's every word. Why is she so focused on keeping the two of you from being together? I wish I knew. If she were any other Telvanni master, I guess she didn't want her son settling for some lowborn servant girl. But nothing like that ever seemed to matter to Sathil. She was far more focused on her research than her rank anyway. What is she researching? From what I understand, she's trying to cure the Nahatan flu. It took the life of her husband many years ago, when Nathan was just a baby. I'm sure that's why she's so protective of her son, but it's no way to let him live. And you think she's keeping him in, in some isolation tower? I heard Sathil used to keep test subjects in the isolation tower. If she's keeping him anywhere, I imagine it has to be there. He spends most of his time on the balcony of the main tower, but he hasn't been out there at all since I left. And do you think she would let you and Nathan be together if you weren't planning to leave? Would it matter? Nathan deserves to make his own choices, regardless of his mother's wishes. And if she really felt that way, why wouldn't she just make her feelings known instead of throwing me out? I wasn't trying to steal him from her. All right. Where is this one taking place at? Right down here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we can keep heading south. There's a little off the beaten path track here. Uh, I'm kind of noticing. Uh, with some enemies lurking. Oh, she's with us now. Looks like this must lead back up to the main road. I wonder if we're missing anything by not traveling along the main road. We do have a sky shard back here. Let's go ahead and grab that. Stand in the presence of Hermaeus Mora. Oh dear. We must converse. Laramil has done well and brought fate's chosen into my unrelenting gaze. All other outcomes are now excluded. From this moment, fate's ever branching tree begins to grow again, and with it, New possibilities emerge. What's this all about? It concerns beginnings and endings, secrets too dangerous to reveal, and the stability of the threads of fate. Hidden rivals threaten my realm, and thereby threaten all of reality. If they succeed, fate will unravel and doom both our world. That sounds bad. Laramel calls you the one who knows. How can your rivals hide from you? I am the golden eye of fate and the keeper of whispers. Knowledge and memory are my domains. How this threat eludes me, I 
do not know. But you are the key to preserving Apocrypha. I have foreseen it. And in doing so, you shall save the mortal realm. How can I save Apocrypha and Nern? Let Laramil guide you, as she can perceive the threads of fate without undue mental anguish. They converge in three locations, places of revelation. Meet her in the Necrom Bindery, in the mortal city of the same name. Now, let us seal our covenant. Seal our covenant. How do we do that? The three glyphics before you contain the concepts necessary to create a contract to bind us. I submit to this as a promise of cooperation. You may serve as my proxy without fear of harming your own interests. Tell me more. Now, take the glyphics. Yeah. Okay, sure. Combine them. But first, tell me more about Apocrypha and its connection to Nern. Do you know so little, mortal? I do know so little. Apocrypha is my domain. A plane of oblivion I have shaped to my needs. And this plane, the mortal realm, some refer to it as Nern. As for the connection, just know that if Apocrypha falls, Nern will cease to exist. Hmm, and what exactly are you? The scholars and mystics of your world call me a Daedric Prince. What you see is only an aspect of my true self, for the mortal mind cannot contain the whole of me. This form suffices. Your mind must remain intact for you to be of use to fate. What do you know about the enemy that threatens Apocrypha? Precious little. They are shadows that vanish under my scrutiny. Obscure figures that somehow hide from my gaze. It is disconcerting. Never have I been so blind. Then how do you know that there is a threat? Every possible fate unfolds before me. They all lead to an event I thought Erased from chance eons ago. If this course isn't altered, Apocrypha falls, reality unravels, and Nern is destroyed. This enemy eludes me, but you are my secret advantage. But if you can't determine who they are, how can I? That is the reason fate chose you. Your instinctual ability to succeed no matter the obstacle's place before you, no matter the odds. Follow the threads I selected for Liramil. See where they lead. That is the key to saving both our realms. What if I'm not sure if I want to sign a contract? It is for your peace of mind, mortal. I offer to bind myself, to give you the power to constrain my actions. So that you may trust me. The contract also marks you as my proxy. That could prove beneficial in some places you must travel. All right. I, I guess we're doing it. Fate takes many paths. Mortal, find Laramel and choose wisely. I feel like we might have already chose poorly. Uh, so where is she? Where is she waiting for us? Oh, she's back in Necrom. Okay, so she's actually maybe back in the city. Uh, we still have outstanding stuff to do here. I want to make sure that I explore this place fully. Uh, before we move on with the main story stuff, I want to hit up all the quests we currently have. I see that there's maybe another quest to grab down this way. 
And of course, I want to I want to make my way down here, and I just want to kind of explore everything and see everything the place has to offer before we think about moving on with the main story stuff. But I am going to take a break here for today. Uh, my thoughts right now are that this class is really, really fun. I have a lot of fun with it. The beam is really cool. The fact that you can move around while you can while you're shooting the beam, uh, it makes it feel pretty action oriented. It has some kind of impact to it that other classes that I've played just seem to lack. So I'm having lots of fun with it. I would love to hear from you guys on any tips about the game, things that you think I should understand that it might take a new person a while to realize uh, unassisted. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your tips. I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you are digging the content, leaving a like on the video, subbing to the channel, ringing the bell, all those things help me out immensely, and I greatly appreciate those that do. Until next time, guys, take care of yourselves out there in the real world, and take care of each other, and we will see you back here again sometime very soon. Bye for now.